Ah, good morning. It's 9:24 and it's uh, it's uh, October the 8th uh, in the year of our Lord 2023. There's Rocky. I don't know what you can see cuz I've turned the camera around, but there he is having a sleep. I wish I could sleep like he does. I'll tell you, he's got a talent for sleeping. Talent I could actually make good use of if I was I, I wish I was better at sleeping. But anyway, um He's a good sleeper, Rock, he is. But, anyway, um, I was just watching more news. Uh, it turns out our, our wonderful Prime Minister here, Justin Trudeau in Canada, uh, is now being outed as a cokehead. Mm-hmm. Apparently he likes his cocaine. Um, it just gets better and better. Pedophile, cokehead, globalist puppet of the evil people behind, um, you know, a puppet of the devils at Davos or whatever, a puppet of the evil people behind the World Economic Forum. Yep, our illustrious leader wants to censor us, um, taxing us to death. He wants to raise the carbon tax by 300%. So that's going to increase the cost of everything. We already can't afford to live, so of course this is the time to do it. Um, make make life even less affordable for us. Of course, what he's really trying to do is get rid of us. That's what it is. He wants the price necessities out of reach, and he's using this myth of human-caused climate change as the reason. You know. Anyway, um... Yeah, apparently um, when he was in India recently and his plane sat on the tarmac for three days, uh, he was in there uh, doing cocaine. This is what an insider is saying, somebody who actually is in a position to know what went on. This person is saying that he was in the plane doing cocaine for three days in India. Um, of course, when he wasn't in the plane, he was insulting the Indian government, upsetting them. So, that's diplomatic, you know. Uh, uh. Anyway, here's the thing. <laughs> Look, there's Rocky. There he is. <laughs> Again, I hope you can see him, I don't know. But, um, this is a guy, okay who refers to anyone he disagrees with as a misogynist and a racist and a Nazi. He's recently actually applauded. They, they invited an actual Nazi. This is an elderly man who is a Nazi from World War II. They invited that guy to come and speak in Parliament. And they honored him. And Trudeau did applaud for him. You know, the Speaker of the House fell on his sword over that one, claimed that the Prime Minister had no knowledge of what was going on and that it was his fault and his fault alone and, and resigned. There's an awful lot of that, you know, where the Prime Minister screws up and others end up having to fall on their own swords and resign to protect him. It's happened repeatedly. The man applauded a um, a Nazi, yet he calls people who go against him Nazis, misogynist, racist. He's been in blackface repeatedly. There's pictures of him in, wearing blackface. That's kind of a racist thing to do for a white man, to paint his face black like it's a big joke. Um, you know, uh, yeah. Calls, calls, calls his enemies misogynists. He doesn't have a great history with women. I mean, who's he to call anyone a misogynist? Anyway, the guy repeatedly accuses the rest of us of doing what he is doing, basically. You know, he's doing these things and we get accused of it. You know... And there's no consequences. He just keeps getting away with it. Other people absorb the consequences, the consequences for him. So what we got a cokehead, pedophile, um, 
prime minister who is controlled by um, evil people in high places, basically, who are just pulling his strings. He's just a puppet of these globalist elites. And um, he doesn't serve us, the Canadian people, at all. Now, people will say, well, just wait till Polliver gets in. Polliver is going to, Pierre Polliver, he's going to be great because he's a conservative and all that. Polliver is a puppet, just like Trudeau is. Has anybody noticed that Polliver is only outspoken on safe issues? When the trucker convoy was in town in Ottawa, that was a polarizing issue. Polliver neither spoke up in favor of it, nor did he speak up against it. You know, because he knew if he spoke up either way, he'd alienate a bunch of people. And so he just didn't speak. Um, Polliver w pushed for, for mandates and for lockdowns and everything. He pushed for that. Um, you know, Polliver is not your friend anymore than Trudeau is your friend. Really, if you're a Canadian, neither of these guys is your friend. They're both going to work against you, and they both have worked against you and not for you. And um, here's the thing about Trudeau, too. Now, uh, when Trudeau was a drama teacher, there was a big scandal involving him and a 14-year-old girl who was one of his students. He ended up paying her a bunch of money to sign a non-disclosure agreement. You know... This is the quality of person we have. He was a drama teacher for less than a year. And he was involved in, a, oh, basically a sex scandal with a 14-year-old child. Um, I don't know. I don't understand it. I don't know how somebody of that caliber can be in the position he's in. Like, look, I'm not qualified to be prime minister. I'm an idiot. If I was prime minister, the country would 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 not would, would, the country would suffer for it because I'm not qualified for for that job. Uh, yet we have somebody who's even less qualified than I am, because at least I know not to go around in blackface, and I know not to bang fourteen year olds. I'm not that I have any desire to do either of those things, but not only do I not have a desire to do them, I also know not to do them. You know? Yet, um, this guy doesn't seem to know. He's just, you know, floating around out there doing whatever. And then after the fact, other people take the blame. Other people say, well, I'll just fall on my sword to protect this well, this individual who's our prime minister. We got to got to take one for the team, you know, got to protect him. You know, he refers to anyone who goes against him with labels that can very easily be applied to himself. And there's evidence to back it up. It can be applied to him and there's evidence to back it up. You know, the man is well anyway now they're trying to get laws through to make it illegal like the things that i'm saying now could put me in prison with these new laws that they're trying to bring in now what kind of a free country are we living in where a citizen would be risking prison by openly criticizing a political leader and I'm not saying by threatening a political leader or anything. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about going after the guy and hurting him or anything. I'm just saying, look, this is what he's done. This is his track record. Um, this is what he's proven himself to be. And yet he's accusing those of us who are against him of being these things. He says people like me are racist, misogynistic, um and just and nazis well i've never applauded a nazi i've never sat and listened to a nazi speak and, and applauded for him 
<laughs> you know, I've never done that. I've never invited a Nazi to come and speak. Nor would I. I don't want to hear from a Nazi. A Nazi whatever a Nazi might have to say doesn't interest me. You know, it seems to interest him, though. Anyway, um, we had that scandal. There have been so many scandals. He's interfered in investigations. He's had judges appointed to scrutinize his actions who are close personal friends of his and who, who owe him their job because he appointed them. Um, all these sham inquiries that have cost the taxpayers a lot of money and inevitably, we know the result before the inquiry even starts. We know we know what they're going to decide. But the fix is in, and everyone knows it. You know, I mean, now for the rest of us, if I'm accused of wrongdoing, and I end up in court, and if the judge in my case is a friend of mine, he has to disclose that and recuse himself from my case. I, you know, he's not allowed to hear my case because he'd be biased. And that's right. That That's a proper thing. That's how it should be. Yet, uh, the Prime Minister can actually appoint a judge to scrutinize his actions, who is a close personal friend of his. And we, the Canadian public, are to believe uh, that there's no bias there. You know, it, it doesn't add up anyway. It just doesn't add up. Um, yeah, anyway, I guess it's true what they say, eh? Rules for thee, but not for me. That's what it is. All right, that's it for now. Uh, closing note here, we'll take another shot of Rocky having a good sleep. Yeah, he's having a good sleep. He's a cutie pie. That give me an opportunity to dig in my itchy ears, too. They're really bothering me lately, but anyway, um, they've been bothering me for a while, actually. They've been act they've been acting up for a couple of years now, but who knows? Anyway, that's it for now. We'll talk to you all later. Um, yeah, don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> Things aren't looking good. Jesus had better come back soon. That's all I can say. Jesus had better come back soon to rule over this mess. Because, uh, you know, what the Bible says is true. And we, we see proof of it every day. Man rules himself to his own detriment. Man rules himself to his own detriment. There you go, Rocky agrees. Look, he even got up. There he is. He says, that's right, you guys do. What you need is a cat to rule you. <laughs> All right, we'll talk to you later.